Hello and welcome back to the next episode of the War for XC Shop Uncut Let's Play series, season number two. Um, and we're back with the uh, German Kaiserreich, or the German Imperial uh, Forces. And yeah, um, we've made great progress in the last couple of episodes. Really great support from you guys has been awesome as always. And I think in today's episode, the primary purpose is going to be number one. Continue our colonial efforts, establish fuel harvesters, establish logistics lines, begin to look to develop our, our uh, first new ships in terms of what our fleet may look like, and then finally some kind of jump-capable vessels that will be able to begin excursions outside of the system. Uh, to do that, we're going to see a lot of research points, we're going to see a lot of other things, and that is going to take some time. Um, but yeah, let's get right into it. So we have the four Dommel class vessels completing construction here. Um, and they have been added to the first Coast Guard division. So far, so good. No issues with them whatsoever. Um, and we also continue our civilian shipping, which is going pretty, pretty heavily. Uh, we're going to have to move even more mines over um, as we continue to mine lots of resources here from Mercury. We currently have 422 mines available, so I'm going to order the first cargo group squadron, or actually the second cargo group squadron, to load mines, unload them onto Mercury, and then refuel. Uh, they'll be able to carry a total of five mines at a time, and so that will require us to do... Um, or oh, that'd be 11 runs total, should do, it'll take 100 days, not that long at all there, uh, just to make sure I got that correct, yeah I did get that correct, very very good, um, and now let's just continue doing a 5 day increments as we go along here, um, Sand Cargo Group Squadron complete orders, which now means Mercury should have all the mines it needs, yeah 120, which means you have 6 million miners currently working on the planet, uh, and they are producing 5,413 tons of material every single year, which is perfect. Um, in terms of other designs and other vessels, we're kind of holding off for now. Um, we're going. I want to develop a fuel harvester. We'll do that after we get the troop transport bay, um, which we will uh, utilize shortly. Uh, we're going to need to produce a lot of other things, especially shipyards, because um, I have a lot of ideals and what I want to be doing here. Okay, so true transport's now done. Um, and we, yeah, we have the tug, right? So my idea is we go um, for like, yeah, we go for like a 50,000 ton. Could I literally just do like a station? You know, like go, go station, go for a uh, true transport. Yeah, I could. So even though, theoretically speaking, right, like, we wouldn't want um, troop transports that are, like, landing orbital troops to do, to do, to be, like, a, a, a big box, a big station box, but for moving around large swaths of troop numbers, it's actually not too bad. So I'm going to go for 50,000 ton, um, yeah, 50,000 uh, 50, ton, um, basically cargo pod, um, and we'll call this uh, troop pod. There we go. Um, we'll call this troop pod. And um, yeah, it's a little different, and we will have like more standardized troop transports, but this, um, this, this does give us like a lot of uh, capabilities in, 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 in ways like, um, actually, why am I even naming that? One second. Rename to troop pond. I always call it to 50 kiloton. 50 kiloton class, and I'm just going to rename this to 200 kiloton class. There we go. So we'll be able to move 50 kilotons of troops, and that only costs about 888 build points, which we can then produce from our industry. Um, and yeah, I think that works actually really, really well for us in a lot of regards. So we're going to go for Space Station, and I'm going to produce... Oh, it doesn't show the names up there. So yeah, I actually probably do want to put in um, Troop Pod 50 Kilton. And then I'm going to rename the class to Cargo Pod. There we go. And then that should make it a little bit easier. There we go. Uh, so we're going to make one. 25% capacity, and we should be able to produce that relatively quickly here. 
Um, got a bunch of facilities that we need researching or sorting out with. Let's go for logistics. I'm going to put 15 on to, uh, where's the sorium? It's construction production, right? Yeah. Uh, sodium harvester. Let's get that done as soon as possible. Military academy completed at Earth, which is fantastic. Um, as we continue to grow our little empire, uh, Mercury continues to expand in terms of the production, the amount of people on the planet, um, and they're providing their, their taxes. How is our wealth situation in regards to that? Let me have a look here. Uh, we're making a lot of wealth. Um, yeah, so we're, we're, we're making about 25% more, 25% income, which is actually really, really good when you think about it. Okay, Kyriopod is on the way now. Uh, two of them, in fact, and those will be done on September. Uh, the Blue Shirt class uh, vessel, so we have now two general purpose tugs, which is fantastic. Uh, the first of the Kyriopods is complete construction, which will now allow us to... Um, how did I get assigned? First car group squadron? Why are you in the first car group squadron? Detach. Um, I'm going to have the halibut deal with this. Um, so we're going to have fleets, cargo pod, tracks for cargo. There we go. It's completed. And that will now allow, um, if we look at colonies, we can load minerals, load all unload minerals, and that gives us a speed of 500 kilometers per second with a cargo capacity of 200,000. So, I'm going to put this under the uh, Imperial Logistica Abteilung. Abteilung. Logist Logistic Abteilung. Abteilung. I I'm never going to know how to pronounce that. But uh, we're going to put this as um, third cargo group squadron. I'm going to give it the designation 200 kiloton plus. And now we're going to be able to move over a lot more stuff. So we can move a total of eight mines at once. So I'm going to do exactly that. Unload installations, refuel. Um, and I'm going to do that over a course of three. Um, yeah, three days, right? 16, yeah. We'll do it that over three days. And so that'll take th a little a month, but we'll be able to transfer eight, eight mines, right? Uh, we'll continue to add more laboratories. We want to get soy harvesters done as quickly as possible. We also want to look into researching other stuff. There we go. We completed the construction of the 200 kiloton cargo pod. We're going to then need a. I'm going to produce another one of these uh, to be done immediately. Um, and yeah, I'm going to next next thing I'm going to look towards is going to be uh, jump point research and getting us out into the system. Um, but there we go, we complete orders, and that means Mercury now has even more mines on her, which means that there we can only have 152 mines, and they are producing uh, 6,500 tons of resources every single year, which is then being shipped back to the uh, Great Earth. Complete construction of the 50 kiloton troop, um, yeah, the troop pod. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put these into here. I'm going to detach the troop pod, detach the herring class uh, all-purpose tug. I'm going to go over here and we're going to uh, tractor the troop pod. Okay, first thing we need to do is tractor. There we go. So tractored up and now I've got a troop capacity. We're going to load up the second, third and fourth Landwehr companies. Oops. Uh, and I'm going to unload the second and first onto Luna. Unload the third onto Mercury and then unload the fourth onto Mars. Then refuel from Earth. There we go. Completed orders successfully. Um, and I'm going to rename. Um, and then what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to create a fleet called Pods. Excess Pods. And then I'm just going to. Um, I'm going to release tracted. tracted uh, ships, right, and then uh, I'm going to put you into here, detach you, you are then going to go over to the shipyard and you're going to tractor cut this cargo pod, and once tractored, you're then going to go up and join the, sec the third cargo, there we go, so now 
We have 400 kilotons of capacity with two of our tugs and they're moving these cargo pods around, which is working out actually really, really well. And we can just build more of them exponentially and that should increase our industrial capabilities rather rapidly when you think about it. Okay, 20 centimeter carronade or the eight inch gun is now completed. Um, I'm gonna put the next onto the 25 centimeter or the 10 inch. Um, and we're just gonna continue along. Okay, construction factory is completed. Um, I'm going to need more commercial shipyards, I think, at some point. I'm going to order three more at 25. Then I'm going to order but more mines. I want another 200 mines to be constructed. Good. Um, and then research-wise, sodium harvest is nearly done, which is fantastic news. Another lamprey or another blue class tug has been completed, which is perfect. And then... Um, I believe this is your sodium harvester, which is great news. Um, the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to go to power propulsion and I'm going to start research into jump point theory. Um, it's going to be the next priority because we're going to need to leave the solar system at some point and that's something I will want to do. Mercury is another 4.85 million people, but I'm not going to be able to send over enough mines. I want to keep enough mines on Earth itself. Um, one thing that I am going to do, however is we need to design ourselves a little sodium. Uh, sodium harvester. Uh, fuel harvester, I guess, will be the correct n nomenclature. Uh, so if I go to here, go over to fuel harvester. Uh, should be around here, fuel harvester station. Uh, no armor. Uh, and we're going to want sodium. I'm going to do a 200 kiloton station. So this will take quite a while to make, but 80 modules make 3.2 million liters per annum. Uh, we're also going to need to develop a tanker to carry that much. Um, yeah, so 80 modules, 3.2 million per annum um, or year. And then I'm going to add fuel storages in for making sure that we can actually support that much a year. So I'm going to do 3.3 million. Um, and that should then allow us, I should add a little bit more excess into there. Uh, does make that sure that's a tanker, but we're going to, uh, make sure it has zero fuel, uh, minimum fuel zero and, uh, yeah, good. And then that's pretty expensive overall, but we should be able to tug it. And one of them will be able to basically completely eclipse all of our uh, land-based capacities. Uh, I'm going to rename this to the um, 3.2 million, million uh, 200 kiloton FHS. Fuel harvest 200 kiloton. And then we're going to need a tanker. Uh, which is very necessary infrastructure, of course. So tanker, um, and then we're going to need engines. We're going to put in uh, Krimpfer. This is the improved commercial. This is the nuclear thermal for that. We're going to design, I guess, a new engine uh, for improved nuclear thermal technology with a larger hull space, which gives us 2,000 total. Um, right. I just want to make sure. Now, this is a commercial engine. We can use this engine. There we go. So, we'll use five of those engines. Um, actually, we'll use like four. And I'm going to give fuel. We need a large fuel storage, really, at the end of the day here. Um, we need to get like 3.2 million liters here. Yeah, I'm going to go for like that much. And then we're going to need a refueling system. Oh, yeah. I also don't want to forget on this. We're going to need a refueling system as well. There we go. Yeah, that refueling system's good. 3.5 million liters of fuel. We may want to add a little bit more that it can carry in total, just because we may want to use it on the front lines if needed. So if I go for... ...10 million liters of fuel. That's a lot, but and it's kind of inefficient, honestly. So I'm going to cut back, and I'm just going to have enough fuel to transport what we need. 
So we're going to go for that. Uh, and I'll do fuel storages here just to make sure that we have a nice... So it's going to be 12,500 ton vessel. I'm going to designate that as a tanker. Um, I'm also going to give conscript crews to all of these just because we don't want to have any issues in regards to that. Okay. Um, so I'm going to retool this for the... No, we don't want the... Sh it's not going to be called the Sharnhorst, right? Uh, where's the ship sign? No. Uh, select name. German. Um... No, none of that fits that. We can just call this um, Islands. No. Hmm, what should we call this? I can't really see any definitive. We'll call it the Kaiser Barbaros, and that's too, too, too much. The, no, the uh, Nomen class. That works. Okay, so we will put into immediate construction the Nomen class vessel. So retool, Nomen. Um, I'm also going to give that a designation, of course. So we're going to go over to uh, Nomen. We don't really need to give it a designation, do we? Because it's not a um, military vessel. So go over to industry. We're going to immediately begin a retool on that. And then I'm going to put that into a shipyard fleet. Start building it up. And I'm going to have space station. We're going to have fuel harvester. Single one of these be put into production. Um, and then once that navy yard's done, that'll then be assumed into its position. Okay, incrementing along there goes our naval shipyard. Perfect. And now we're going to continue to construct whatever else we need here. So days go by, and there you go, the Norman class vessel has completed construction. Um, I'm going to build another one of them. Uh, shipyard construction, there we go. Uh, I don't see geraniums on the way, jump point theory is on the way. That's all going to take quite a lot of time in general here. Um, add more labs to getting a jump point theory, so then we can get gravitational sensors, then we can look into other things. Um, there's a lot of research that I do want to do. Um, all well, these things, okay, production of fuel harvester completed. Um, I'm now going to put the rest into construction factories, in fact. Uh, well, you construction factories, I'll order another 200 at 25. And then I'm going to, we're going to have to move that fuel harvester over. So I'm going to detach that. I'm going to have the lamp free, go and handle this one. Uh, you are going to tractor the fuel harvester. You're going to take that. What is our current sorium locations? Uh, so if we have a look here, uh, Jupiter and uh, Uranus. So we're going to go over to Jupiter for the for our initial uh, run. And then once you are done, you're going to release that. And that should be just fine. There we go. So now we have the uh, fuel harvester there. Gonna have the tanker now detach. Gonna put this into uh, a new admin command. I'm gonna call this the um, let's let's do another German to English translation, ladies and gentlemen, or English to German. So let's do uh, Imperial Fuel Service. Uh, so I'm um, th this is what it's apparently is. So the Imperiala. Imperiala Craft Stuff Service, uh, which I'm then going to put, uh, I'm going to actually modify that to a industrial, and I'm going to lump in the tanker, the Norman, uh, as well as once the fuel harvester gets there, yeah, the fuel harvester, put it into there. Going to have the tanker, basically, what it's going to do is it's going to Go to uh, the harvester every year. So we feel from stationary tankers. Let's get a year in seconds really quick here. Thank God for Google, uh, because I would not know off the top of my head. So there we go. That's how many seconds there are. Let's just input that into order delay. There we go. And then zero uh order delay and then once you've refueled from stationary tankers you're going to take that back to earth you're going to transfer that fuel to the colony and then we can just cycle your muse and we're completely sorted in that regard then we need to assign over some officers um 
enable admin commands, we need production. Production, production, production. There we go. Captain Wolfgang Eichroyd. Eich. Eichroyd. I have no idea what that is, but anyway, we're going to assign that to here. Which should now mean that we're going to be producing 3.8 million litres of fuel a year. And with that announcement and with that amount of fuel being produced, I'm going to stop the uh, refineries on Earth, which will then save us uh, mineral sorium. And mineral sorium is a separate resource, of course, to fuel sorium. And so we do obviously want to conserve wherever possible. Now that Norman is going to be under the same, um, it's going to be under the same area, but with, it's not going to be transporting any fuel. It's just going to be on standby for any anything that we do need. Um, now half a year until we get jump point theory on the way here. We've got inactive research labs, um, which is causing issues. I'm going to start buffing up research into beam fire controls right now. Commercial shipyards completed construction. Um, yeah, uh, commercial shipyards completed construction. Um, what else would I really want, particularly? Spaceport research facilities. I'm going to start putting more into research because that's really our bottleneck at the moment. I'm going to uh, add another 10 laboratories. So that'll mean we're making two labs a year. Jump point theory complete research, which is perfect. I'd, I'd like Nuclear Pulse before we did any major actions, though. Uh, so we're going to do 15% on that. That goes 1,500. Then for sensors and fire controls, I'm going to... First off, we're going to finish up this being fire control research. Then we're going to go into gravitational survey sensors. But yeah, I want Nuclear Pulse at least before we leave system. Um, I generally don't want to stay in system for too long. I want to leave the system. I want to explore. Um, that's generally how I operate, but that's going to take quite a bit anyway. So we've got B5 control range at 32,000 kilometers, which is nice to have. Um, I'm going to put the rest now into getting us better sensors and fire control uh, technologies. Yeah, we may need to start moving over. Wow, Mercury is really growing. Holy crap. Um, yeah, that's, that's growing massively. So we can probably send another 150 mines, yeah. So we can now carry 16 mines at a time. Um, so what I'm going to do is load mine on Earth, unload onto Mercury, refuel from Colony, and I'm going to repeat that nine times. And that will carry, like, what would that be, uh, 160 mines over? Pebble bed reactor complete research, which now means we can get improved nuclear, uh, not improved, but uh, nuclear pulse engines, which are going to be a big step up for us here. Um, so we're going to put all of the research into that. That'll take a few years to develop. And we complete all this. Mercury now has 300 mines on the planet with a mining population of 15.6 million people, uh, which means that we're mining about 12,000 tons worth of resources, which we're then sending to Earth, which is perfect. Uh, Corundium is really going to be an issue that we're going to have to watch out for. So as soon as we get out, we're going to have to prioritize finding that Corundium. Um, our projected usage is pretty insane in terms of the amount of mines and stuff we want. Um, so I'm actually going to cancel that and I'm going to order construction of uh, space stations. I'm going to order the construction of three of these, three of these, and then two of these. That is going to be what we're going to order for construction. Uh, cargo part, fuel storage, cargo part 200 kilotons, those are three constructs and orders, um, that's good. We need research into gravitational survey sensors, which is perfect. Next thing I'm going to have them focus on is going to be the science department. Um, getting us, uh, that science department will really, really help out. Then once Duke the Plus is done, we're going to focus on getting us jump drive technology. And then I'm aiming for hopefully in the 2020s, we can start to begin to leave system at that point. Um, but yeah, we've got a bunch more pods being constructed now, which is perfect. Um, and I'm going to bring those pods into excess uh, over here so that we have them. And that will allow us to move as, once we start building a lot of these vessels um, pretty, pretty, damn, pretty damn nicely. Uh, so Imperial Logistical, uh, I'm going to also continue to 
dust slipways on some of these. Um, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to retool this shipyard for the Blucha class. Um, and when I can tilt capacity upgrade this to 20,000, 20,000, and 20,000, so we can get a little bit better use. I'm going to upgrade this to, I think, 7,500 tons. Uh, and this for a patrol boat, um, I'm going to increase this to 2,000 tons uh, total size. Uh, I'm going to give it this shipyard. We're going to go for a... Um, a, what you call it? We're going to go for a 4,000 ton capacity. You are going to be a 8,000 ton capacity. And then you are going to be a um, 12,000 ton capacity. And so that should really start spending our wealth, like heavily, heavily, heavily spending our wealth. Um, and our usages should be up in the roof. Yeah, our duranium, our duranium we're going to be using to expand these shipyards is going to be pretty ridiculous. I will admit that much. Uh, but we need it to expand for, for what we're doing. We just need to get to exploration so we can start to find other things. Speaking of that, we're probably going to need to start to look towards developing uh, j uh, jump stabilization points. Um, which I'm actually going to take five labs of this. And I'm going to give that to a construction and production person. Cancel that project and immediately begin um, research into the small jump stabilization point. Troop pod has been completed. That's perfect. Inactive research fields. Uh, let's add that on to nuclear pulse. And we got another one. Troop pod 50 kilotons there done. And we complete conceal capacity upgrade for a bunch of these shipyards. And I'm going to begin to add additional slipways to them as well. Remember, increasing the tonnage uh, for a shipyard doesn't doesn't just allow us to build bigger ships, but it also increases the speed at which we build smaller ships, which is really, really useful here. Okay, I'm going to order up three, actually four more blue class vessels. One, two, three, and then one. And those will be done in October. And so this will allow us, once we start to get to colonization efforts, to transport significant, significant quantities of uh, infrastructure, of mines, of various other things. Um, and that's really, really going to be useful when it, when it comes to expanding quickly as soon as we get out of the system, which hopefully should happen um, relatively rel within this episode, I'd hope. Um, fuel harvest to complete construction, which is perfect news. Um, I'm going to put the rest into research. No, we're going to put the rest into mines. I want 100 more mines. Um, and then we have those fuel harvesters being constructed, correct? So if I go over to here, let's put these troop pods in. Yeah, let's put the troop pods in. Uh, and then fuel harvester. Um, we're going to have you then get tracked by the lamprey, which seems to be handling all of this kind of stuff. Uh, so you are going to grab you, tractor. And then bring you over, release into that, and then go and refuel from colony. Um, and that should now increase the amount of fuel that we're able to garner. Um, and I'm going to actually put these two together, so we are now getting enough, uh, enough of fuel for what we need. Uh, ship construction, shipyard. Let's put that into construction here. Um, it's a crash upgrade from Merkel AG at Earth has reached its capacity. Perfect news, um, which means that should have reached at 4,000. Um, I'm going to add the next slip poise onto that. And now we're doing 12,000, 8,000. So this is going to be our Corvette yard. This is going to be our um, destroyer slash cruiser yard. This is going to be uh, frigates. Um, actually, you know what I'm going to do? In World War One and World War II, they don't really have many frigates. So what I'll, I want my idea is, I'm actually going to have, we'll have, uh, yeah, but that's also destroyers, right? So we'll do corvettes, um, corvettes, the de destroyers uh, over here, and then we're going to go for cruisers at uh, ten to twelve thousand tons, and then like battleships and battle cruisers will be like eighteen thousand to twenty thousand, something like that. Okay, nuclear pulse engine technology complete research, which is a major milestone for what we need. Um, and now we're going to begin to research into all of these uh, jump 
requirements that we're going to be needing for jump vessels, which will take quite a lot of research to garner. Slipway added to Hanzik Steel Services and Slipway added to Mikus Enterprises. Inactive research facilities, of course. Uh, we're nearly done with the science department, which is going to be a big deal. Um, we complete construction of four Beluka class vessels, which is very, very, very good. And that will then, I'm going to then transport those into the Imperial uh, Logistica Abtelung. Um, and we're going to put them into the lamp free. There we go. So I'm going to rename this to Spare uh, APTs or all purpose trucks. So we can we can we can basically have a million tons of cargo being transported at once if we really need to at slower speeds and then we can make smaller cargo pods if we want to get higher speeds um and it's really really useful in a lot of regards by doing this uh, okay we're going to produce another 10 labs 25 and what is our labs at right now we're at 38 research facilities which is lovely uh, science department is complete research um, i'm going to put the rest of the research now into getting us Better thermal and electromagnetic sensors, uh, which are going to be required. So let's go for those. 200 kiloton fuel harvester has been completed at um, at Earth. Uh, so I'm going to have one of the tugs detach. Go over here. You're going to grab it. So uh, you're going to be your part of first cargo group. Grab that one, put it into release tractor, head back to Earth and refuel. There we go. And then we have the Norman class vessel finished up construction. And now we have three Normans on it, which should be able to transport all the fuel that we need. Barracuda is now home, so I'm going to put that back into spare APTs. Okay, uh, which now means that we should be producing about 10 million litres of fuel a year, 11 million litres of fuel in fact, which is lovely to think about. Um, that means that we're going to have absolutely no issues with keeping fuel high and uh, costs low. A lot of regards. Um, now I'm going to start construction of actual like 5,000 infrastructure at 25, five mass drivers. Um, I'm going to start, I'm going to produce 100 automated mines, I'm going to make, um, and I'm going to start producing more maintenance facilities, 50 more of them, I'm just going to start going down the line in that regard. Okay, what was that, that was pound proportion to the guy died, looks like a guy died, unfortunately speaking, he was pretty good, so kind of annoying that he did die. Uh, let's get max quadrant jump radius and jump drive efficiency, those are all the things that we're going to be needing. Single capacity upgrade, I believe that will be for the 7,500 ton. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, um, we'll have to start laying down the keel or the, the, the vessel uh, for the vessel that we'll be using for surveillance. And it's going to be a scout frigate, um, likely anyway. We have a max squad jump size. We research into thermal sensitivity 6. Um, so I'm going to bring up really, really quick here. I'll just bring that over. Uh, Warfax calculator, um, and I'm going to bring up Shipped Optimizer. We want a 7,500 ton vessel. We're going to be using Nuclear Pulse. Uh, we don't have that good engine boost. We have size 40 max engines with a 0.9 fuel efficiency and a high density geranium. Uh, do we have high density geranium? We'll have high density geranium, so we can assume that it'll be like that. So I'll bring up the calculator again. Okay. Uh, no feasible solution, excuse me. Oh, wait, because of the speed. Um, I would say 2,500 kilometers per second with a range of 80 billion kilometers is pretty, it's pretty kosher if you ask me. Uh, we're going to go for 80%. So that gives us 3,500 tons, which means that we have a little less than half of the vessel remaining in terms of uh, stuff we can add onto it. Uh, let's just add in the jump drive. So jump drive uh, for this. We would need a size 37.5, which would give us 1,301 tons. Now each, if we have a look at each of the uh, necessary requirements in terms of uh, 
in terms of geological and gravitational survey sensors, right? So that's 250 tons. So with that estimate out of the way, we can probably safely say that we'll have maybe three sensors, maybe four sensors total that we could outfit. Maybe, I'll, maybe I'm going to reduce the range a little bit because that's a little much. Um, I'm going to go for like 50 billion kilometers for now. I think that'll be fine. Actually, let's go for 2,000 kilometers per second with an 80 billion kilometer range. What does that give us? Okay, what about 60 billion kilometer range? Gives us 20, which gives us 4,500 available tonnage, which then gives us 2,350 available tonnage. Um, I think we're just going to have to pack a lot of unlimited, right? I think we're just going to have to pack on more fuel than I otherwise would like, but that gives us four, two gravitational, two geological, and then we'll do the rest with normal sensors. I think that's fine. It's right now it's our fuel efficiency that's killing us, but um, yeah, so we're going to have a single engine, size 40, 0 0.95 uh, in terms of efficiency. So nuclear pulse, 0 0.95, size 40, is that what? Yep, size 40. Um, Let's go back to the component design uh, really, really quick here. Uh, there we go. Size 40 engine. And that gives us an engine power of 304. Um, so let's give that a company name. So Flagman Friedrich. Or Friedreich. Um, and then uh, I'm going to give this naming uh, C. C2000. C2000 304. Um, actually, it's going to be F, F, 2000, 304, um, I, or nuclear pulse engine. Okay. We will create that design, um, and get that researched immediately. Um, we also need to design two sensors. I'm going to design 250 ton sensors for this, but we'll have, we'll wait for the EM sensitivity tech to complete. Either way, for now, we're going to need that engine, and I'm going to add that to the queue once they're done with power and propulsion specific requirements and needs. Hopefully, we get to send our first ship off into the deep darkness of the void somewhat shortly, but I don't, I'm not sure. We've still got quite a bit to go. 8,000 ton yard completed. Um, so that's going to be for our uh, destroyers and complete research in a small jump stabilization module, which is fantastic. Um, I'm going to redirect your labs now to power and propulsion, and also to sensors and fire controls, uh, which should hopefully speed up the processes. Wow, our boronido reserves are just massively dumping. At least we have um, a lot of boronido on Mercury, so it's not too, too bad uh, here. In regards to usage, it's our macasium, duranium, and acarundium. That's the problem. Projected usage, 31,000. Okay, I'm cancelling mines. Cancelling that. Uh, research facilities, 1,200, 1,200. Um, I'm going to give this now 75. Yeah, that's that's a problem, I will admit. Um, Like... We can't be having an annual deficit of like 30,000 tons, especially when we have such a short supply of currentium. Slip rate added. Um, in fact, I'm going to halt then. I'm going to halt up key this um, and I'm going to up up key this. I'm going to actually stop construction of that um, just because we cannot afford that much currentium to be spent. That's like 24,000 currentium at that point being spent. Put your research into EM sensitivity sensor tech, correct, good. Um, and then I'm gonna go for EM detection sensors. I want size five. So we don't really want active sensors on the serve on the scout or science vessel because it'll just give away their position. But thermal sensors and passive sensors could actually like help them in finding you know, detecting um, uh, worlds with populations on them, and so they don't have they, they wouldn't go go through that. So um, I'm gonna call this the Mark II. Um, standard uh, navigational sensor, navigational radar, we'll call it. 
And then I'm going to go do the exact same thing for thermal. So mark to standard thermal radar. And we're going to give this to size of five. There we go. Okay, great. And then I'm going to put the rest of the labs now back into getting the research for these done. So sensor fire controls, Jaquez, Kinsley, or Thorsten. I mean, we've got really good uh, sensor scientists because that's really, really nice uh, to have. Um, okay, navigation, and also thermal. And then after that, I want you to go for fire control ratings and just get a better ratings overall here. We're going to need range primarily when we're using carinades. Um, how is the fuel harvester situation going? You guys should be moving fuel. Yeah, well, you're we finishing up here uh, in terms of the amount of fuel you are using. So I'm going to actually have to build a few more Norman class vessels. Ship construction, shipyard. Let's build a couple more of those. Standard, standard navigational radar completed. Production of mass drivers completed at Earth, which is perfect. I'm going to put the rest now into research facilities. Okay, one research facility required. Uh, Carinade, we'll do that. Um, Mark two thermal, standard thermal radar completed. And now all we're going to be needing is engine and all the other stuff. Uh, how is power proportion? Do we have anyone better for science roles? We can add an extra five labs, which I think is worth it. So we'll do that. We'll go for jump drive efficiency number four. Then, uh, what do we have completed already? We have that, we have that. So we only need the engine after that, right? Right? Yeah, I'm correct. So we're going to need the engine after that. Just going to make sure as well that, uh, that this is correct. Yeah, okay, everything looks correct there. Total capacity upgrade for Tits Marine or Tights Marine Shipyard completed. We're going to keep that at uh, 12,000 ton capacity for now. And I'm going to increase the 4,000 ton shipyard to a little bit more because want, I want to design Corvettes and I also want to design other, other ships as well on top of that. Uh, the rest I'm going to put construction and production to research rate right now. Um, and also we need to start building jump stabilization pods. So that's what I will do as well. Uh, select name, uh, let's go for the uh, Tron time. Um, I'm going to call this Jump Stabilization Station. So the Tron time Jump Stabilization Station. We're going to give it no armor, no fuel needed, and I'm going to put on a Jump Stabilization uh, point. So there we go, 360 days, exactly what we need. And I'm going to uh, order up two of them to be constructed. Um, 225 capacity. Okay. Uh, jump drive efficiency completed, which now means we can design our jump drive, which we will need. So if I go over. I think I closed the calculator by mistake there. Um, so ship optimizer. Ship optimize, that's what we need. And then jump drive, that gives us 2,200. So we need 37.5 size jump drive, military jump drive, of course. Um, so 37.5, here we go. And everything looks good on that. I'm going to call this the uh, JM7500. Uh, give it a company name, the Huber Marine JM7500 um, jump drive i'll just cut i'll shorten it to drive just to make it a little bit easier on myself so there we go we'll create that design and we'll get that underway under research after the primary engine is done uh we will get that researched down and so we should in about a year so about 2020 uh we should have all the components we need to build our vessel which is going to be really really good um tron time, one tron time completed which means we'll be able to stabilize when needed and then we also have inactive research facilities. Um, I'm going to start because we need to continue our research into other fields. So I'm going to start taking away labs uh, from these just because we want to have scientists constantly, constantly be training up here. Terraforming module. 
Um, ground combat, I want one in ground combat as well. We're going to go for bet powered infantry armor, that's useful. Missile and kinetics weapons, uh, we're going to go for... No, we don't want any kinetic weapons, actually. We'll go for gorse cannon rate of fire. Um, launch velocity is going to be needed. Then for logistics, we need someone in logistics. Um, fuel storage large would probably be good there. So just get everyone training up primarily is what, is what I want. Um, the Norman, we can finish another Norman. I'm going to assign that up to up to the this. Are they, are they, are they out of port? Seems like they are. Tron time done. Uh, we can maybe research into the nuclear pulse engine we will need. Um, I'm going to set up the Norman there. So now we have four Norman class vessels, which will be grabbing stuff in and out. Uh, how is industry looking? Okay, that's going okay then, I guess. Um, I'm going to build like 20 DETS. There's not really much more else I would want to build. We don't have the economy to continue our construction of things. Uh, oh, unless I got a science and fire control person died, which is unfortunate. Let's get them back onto being fire controls because that's where I want to put most of our research, right? So I want to put... we Because we're going carronades, we don't really need... Um, so we don't really need, so to speak, a lot of research into weapon technologies. We do need a lot of research into fire control technologies to actually make use of the carronades. Um, so that that's where I'm going to put the predominant of our military research into those carronades. But we should have our jump drive now here finishing up soon. There we go. So let's begin designing our jump capable vessel. Um, so we're going to design this as a science vessel. Um, Scout frigate, scout vessel, sensor vessel, science vessel, um, science, science, there's no like science, I guess I'm just going to call this a, um, a survey frigate or survey ship, the SS survey ship, going to give it a name, um, I'm going to give it a German cruiser name, German, German, German cruisers, uh, we'll give it the Magdeburg name. So the Magdeburg class survey ship. Uh, we're going to put on the engines first off. So we need to put on this, so one engine. We're going to give it a deployment time of 48 months, I think, is is, is going to be fine. Actually, 72 might be really nice. Yeah, 72 months. If we can get away with it, we're going to put the standard radar on as well as the EM. There we go. Then we're going to put on the jump drive. Uh, where is the jump drive? There we go. And next, we're going to be needing uh, fuel. So we're going to need like a million liters. Yeah, quite a bit. So 1.35. Uh, and then we're going to need to actually put geological and gravitational service sensors on. So geological, gravitational. That only gives us one of each. Um, we could reduce the amount of fuel we are using quite significantly, right? I'm going to give that, and that will allow us to fit on extra things that we'll need. So we'll go 60 burn kilometers, uh, and we're also going to need to add on extra maintenance stuff, stuff right? So that will give us, so if every five years, nine to eight, we're going to need like a lot more maintenance storage. Um, yeah, it's just not feasible. So I'm going to go down to 48 months, and I'm going to... Um, Get rid of that, and that gives us 3.6 years. Uh, I'm going to then add a small maintenance storage bay, and that gives us way, way too much, way too much. Uh, we need a small one then. And that gives us a total of four years of maintenance life, and that will, I think, so largely suffice. I'm going to go for that. Um, so, yeah, we don't, this isn't going to have great sensor capability, I guess. I mean, I want to actually reduce even more fuel just to get an extra survey sensor on. Um, gravitational, geological survey sensor. Um, it's gonna spend most of its time geologically surveying probably. Um, so that's when we'll actually put most of the sensors. Uh, oh yeah, we also need to update the armor, correct? My rad, yeah, yeah, we don't have the... I need to remove the labs. Actually, why do we have so many labs available? That's the question. Oh, yeah, because the thing ended. Uh, high-density geranium. 
Then power propulsion, we're going to work on fuel efficiency and capacitor recharge right next. So we'll have to wait for the uh, high density uranium to be done. That's good. Then if we go over to our survey vessel, the Magdeburg, we can update that armor. Good. And then I can add on gravitational. Can I reduce the fuel? Yeah, I actually can. So I think this is a design. Yes, it, we, we were sacrificing a lot of the range that we needed. But we can refit once we get better technology. And for now, this will work for our purposes. Um, it has about the same, if we have a look at the Beirut, right? It has about the same range as the original Beirut. Like, but it has a jump drive, it has better sensors, and it has... Um, got both gravitational and geological survey sensors on the vessel itself. So there we go. Uh, I'm now going to give it a... Uh, we're going to uh, give it... We'll name this after... We'll just give it a general... Now that will be weird. We'll give it lakes and rivers. I think that always, always, always goes well. And I'm going to call it the SMS. And that will be His Majesty's Ship. Select one random name. We have all the components designed, so we're going to immediately put this into a retool. And that will be done in 2021, May 2021. Um, if, we're, if we're lucky, we'll actually start building the vessel in like uh, August, which is the same year it is currently. Um, okay, we'll put the rest of the laboratories into there now. So now we're just waiting. Slipway added to coop for uh, naval shipping. Um, let's continue to add more. I want to build like I want to be able to build like at least four corvettes at a time. Um, two cruisers at a time is fine, or two destroyers at a time is fine, and one cruiser at a time is fine. We'll eventually have to expand those shipyards significantly, but for now it's not an issue. Uh, okay, we're gonna we have finished construction of two uh, of well of the tooling for the Magdebergs. Uh, so we're going to, first off, we're going to give the first vessel is going to be called after the namesake. So SMS Magdeburg, construct. And then the SMS Hudson uh, will be constructed. And those will be done in two years. So quite a bit of time. Um, and in that regard, I'm going to actually to capacity upgrade this to a uh, 12,500 ton uh, slipway or shipyard. But yeah. Um, Slip right into Merkel, perfect. Complete research of engine uh, fuel efficiencies, which is nice. And uh, let's continue to get that fuel efficiency up. And then I'm gonna go straight in for capacitor recharge because that's one of the big issues with carronades. They do a lot of damage, but they also need a lot of power to actually be able to fuel the damage that it can do. Um, let's keep getting fire control speed ratings and then beam fire control ratings up and then uh, go into thermal EM sensors. So kind of, it's going to be been about 40 years, about 46 years, and uh, and we'll have left the system. So this is just generally how long it takes um, before stuff happens. I mean, as soon as we leave the system, we could get into combat immediately, um, which could be definitely a, an issue, right? So I'm going to build, wow, our uranium stockpiles are not doing good. Okay, I'm going to hold all product construction until we are doing better in terms of resources. Okay, we use a 25 centimeter carronade, which is a 10 inch gun, uh, and then we'll go for the 12 inch guns next. But yeah, power plants as well as fire controls are going to be the main hindrance to carronade weapons, so we have to keep that in mind. We can research into the uh, larger research rate, which is amazing. That will and that improves our research by 20% um, just across the board, which is a really, really massive deal. Okay, and on the 22nd of July, uh, 2023, uh, the Hudson and Magdeburg completed construction, and I'm going to immediately order up two more vessels to be constructed, the uh, Orkost -O 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 uh, Sea and the Euph Euphrates, have both been constructed. Um, I'm just going to close this down for now, just so I don't have to, to see it. So we're going to take the Hudson and the Magdeburg, and I'm going to... Uh, put them under the, uh, where is the survey command? Yeah, there we go. Uh, I'm going to make sure that the survey command actually has someone in charge. Uh, survey. 
naval admin commands. Captain Heinz Wiegmann uh, is going to be in command of the, uh, what is it called again? The uh, Kaiserlich uh, Vermessung Eitelung. Um, <laughs> not sure that's correct, but it was a good try. Uh, okay. Then we're going to give standing orders to begin surveying next five system bodies, survey location, fuel less than 50%, uh, return two colonies all, deployment exceeded, refuel if possible, and then we're going to do the exact same thing for you. And this is where the fun begins, ladies and gentlemen. This is where um, we will be able to start finding things out about the universe. So they're going to go out, they're going to survey the locations, and they're going to tell us um, if there are any jump points. Uh, so I'm actually going to turn server locations on again. There we go. Did we find a jump point? No, we just uh, that was sensors. We'll see how many uh, uh, we actually get. Okay, uh, missile connects finished. That was for the gorse weapon. We'll increase that rate of fire as much as we can. Once it gets to four, it'll then be worth it, I think. Or well, at some point, anyway. Uh, fuel rates done. No jump points yet, which is concerning, I will admit. Okay, we discovered a new jump point in Sol, jump point one. I'm going to tell the Hudson then, um, you are going to go through it. Let's go. I hope this will be an exciting, uh, or this will be very unclear. Oh, whoa, 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 that occurred. Ah, terrestrial world, 0 0.07. Okay, this could actually be NPR. Got to be careful of that. Uh, not sure it would be. That temperature's pretty extreme. Um, so we have a terrestrial world with an nitrogen oxygen atmosphere. Or 359. Um, with an oxygen of 0 0.071. This could be brought down to breathable by just reducing... It. There's not that much atmosphere as well, so, and it's a smaller planet Earth, so this could actually be terraformed relatively easily. And then we'd have to increase temperatures a little bit, and that would be a fully habitable world right next to Sol. So, where's the Hudson gone? Uh, Hudson, Hudson, Hudson. Once you've refueled, head straight back. There could still be dangers in the system, though, so you've got to keep that in mind. So far, no detections, which is fantastic news. So now we're just going to continue our survey efforts. No, it's advising to use insufficient protection, apparently. God, Mercury's grown. We're going to keep that stable for now. Um, I'm going to order up another four Domal class vessels. I want to know what's on this planet. Give me the details. Give me the information. We research into Cap 2. Uh, let's go for Cap 3 research next. Okay, and Wolf. Nothing on the planet? Are you kidding me? It took all that time to survey and you found nothing. Well, I think that's when we'll leave the episode off, guys. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed. We finally discovered our first ever system, Wolf 359, with a very, 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 very promising start. Hopefully, the second planet yields more than the fourth planet did. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And um, make sure to join and become a member if you want to support the channel in, in the best way possible. And head over onto the Discord. We've got a lot of stuff going on. And Shattered Empire Episode 2 should be out later today.